right, question number three is the most perfect album. So a perfect album for anyone who doesn't kind of understand the concept is it's an album you can listen to from front to back without skipping. Uh, for example, this is one of the choices, but like when, when uh, To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar came out, I put that shit on on a Bluetooth speaker when I worked at Arby's and I ran through the entire album without skipping and I was just in a fucking trance. That's not my choice, but that's a definition of what one could describe as a perfect album. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see what people have to say to this topic. I think this will be the most discussed topic of the entire show because music is a widely expansive universe. Um, and it'll be good to hear what people have to say. With that being said, Evan, you're first. Uh, so, uh, mine is a newer band, obviously. Um, me being the young kid of the group. Uh, since DeAndre changed his answer, we'll get into that later. Um, mine was Death of a Bachelor by Panic at the Disco. So, uh, for those who don't know who Panic at the Disco is, they were the ones that wrote the song, I Write Sins on Tragedy, you know, with the bridesmaid as a whore and shit like that. Um, but... This album, so I told a story a couple episodes ago about how I managed to get Alexis to a concert for her favorite band without her knowing. This was the concert that it was. I had never heard this album until I heard that concert, and that made me download the album. And I have been able to listen to that album front to back, no stopping, uh, hundreds of times ever since. Um, it's got two very popular songs, in uh, one of them is Victorious, which is a popular song at the end of newer TV shows. It has uh, Emperor's New Clothes. It, it's got so many. It's got Hollow. It's just, if you haven't listened to the album, I'd, I'd seriously go give it a chance to listen to it. It's it's a lot of fun. It's high energy. It's upbeat. So, it's, yeah, that's my that's my thing. All right. Um, I'm going to go first. Um, I didn't like the album. <laughs> I understand. Uh, I didn't. And it, it, it's not because not I don't like uh, uh, rock music. I mean, I love rock music. Uh, I like all music. Yeah, you thought Nirvana was a metal band. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, You're not living uh, that down anytime soon. Um, however, I didn't like it. I, I liked the album. Uh, the, I will say that I did like one song. That one song, uh, Crazy Equals uh, Crazy Good or Crazy yeah, Good. Yeah, Crazy Equals Genius. Genius? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I love that fucking song. I, don't, I mean, the first time hearing it was because you said this is your pick, and I went down. I said I actually actually kept that on my on my uh, playlist. I like I like that song. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I might not be a Panic of a Disco fan. Uh, Which and and they are they are an extremely acquired taste. They come out of the emo like the uh, the whole emo scene. Um, is where they really started. So I get that, you know, people are going to may not necessarily have heard about it or, or just listen to them as much as some of these other albums are great albums on here. Um, well, 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 here's the thing too. So let me read that. I, I know I said I might not be a fan, but I think I, w I wasn't a fan of this album because I actually, so, so I wanted to give their other albums a chance and uh, uh, the fever you can, you can, you can, you can sweat out. Good album. A few weeks spread out, I thought was was better actually, uh, and that that's because it has one of the most popular songs, which is um, "I Write Sins." I write sins, not tragedies. Yeah, I write sins, not tragedies. Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, we're wrong. It's, I, I'm thinking it's like a, a terrible album. I just I, I personally didn't like. It. Oh, I get it. Uh, Joe's on you. Oh man, you know what? Uh, I'm predisposed not to like this because for a while there there was that one arcade fire album that i think was the only cd my kids owned for a while and every time we were in the car that was that but just i don't know i mean the title track is kind of a like a it's like a kind of frank sinatra moment i did not dislike that one but um i don't know i think if you're talking greatest album ever you got to have something with wide appeal and I think you went a little too niche. Uh, just, you know, when I say panic, you say disco. When you say death of a bachelor, I say, meh. I don't know. I mean, it was okay. Oh, and by the way, emo bands, name your song something meaningful. It's not cute. It's stupid. <laughs> All right, CJ. <laughs> you. <laughs> you mean, you mean uh, Metro, yeah. Metro City's Shake It isn't a good enough song? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh uh, man! Yeah, no, I kind of, I pretty much agree with you know, both of them. You know, see, Joe, it's like I, 
Yeah, I think if I listen to more of it, then you know I might be able to get into it because you no, know, it wasn't like horrible. You know, it's just I didn't think that album was you know good. Uh, just like just not yeah, just not to me, to me you know. But yeah, but it seems like the stuff I are. If I listen to more stuff, more of it, you know, maybe I can get into it later. Just I you know that yeah, that album is not the uh, that's not the one. It's not the joint. All right. Uh, actually, CJ is on you. Oh shit, son. All right. Now the album I've heard was "All Eyes on, All Eyes on Me" by Tupac. Now, yeah, and that's including both books. Now, without going into too much detail, um, junior high school, I was well, obviously I was a weird kid, uh, but but also very, very angry. Mm-hmm. You know, I, yeah, and then I, yeah, then I'm not the nice, happy going, happy go lucky person I am today. No, no, nope. I hated damn near everybody. I wanted to fight a lot. No, and I, the idea of punching damn near anyone in the face, including, you know, including my teachers, was, yeah, yeah, that was just my thing. That was, that's what, that's what I wanted to do all the do you time. Need, do you need Hated some help, my friend? No, hey, no. This is junior high school. No, the thing is, there were other things going on in my life. You know, as I said, when I go into much detail, there were lots of other things going on in my life that you know, was just compounding on top of each other, and you know, things were just going bad. You know, yeah. You know, so like, you know, like most kids, I listen to music a lot. You know, and try to escape. But like, you know, all I was gonna be fucking Tupac. That was the that was the one thing I actually listened to like on repeat all the way through. Over and over, you know, and that, you know, that kept me saying, like, no matter what was going on, was fucking Tupac was always there for me. You know? I know for some people, the, you know, some people the lyrics are a little, you know, a little drastic and stuff. But, but you know, I actually understood. Yeah, I actually understood it. You know, I understood it. Felt it. You know, you know, it, you know, it made sense to me. You know, and to you know, like, you know, there, you know, like other people felt certain ways about things. You know, like I did. You know, and you know, people like had like sometimes worse lives than me, you know, places and can survive. Uh, yeah, I was I was just down with that. I can vibe with it, you know. No matter what, I was at Tupac. All right. Uh Joe's on you. So I listened to this album uh this week for the very first time ever. Yes, that's right. I just never got into Tupac. I mean, uh there's people I know who haven't seen Caddyshack either, for example. It just passed them by, and they never got there. But okay, so first of all, um, in case you had noticed, I am I am very white, so this is not <laughs> this is not where I'm going for my music. In the mid '90s, and very old, I, I was getting yeah. In the mid '90s, I was getting married for the second time already. Like I was fuck. I was Beck, man. I, I was not, I Wilco. I did not know that, Joe. Holy shit! I was REM. Mm-hmm. That that was yeah. that was me. That's great, just, Joe. I just never found it. And I have to say now, especially knowing what I know, I do like it. I don't know if it will ever qualify as one of my favorite albums ever, but uh, it just missed me is all. So I'm going to say um, I'm going to grade it incomplete. Mm. Oh, all right. Uh, that's, that's not bad, though. All right, Evans, will you? Okay. Um, first off, I, I'm one of those people who thinks Tupac's still alive somewhere. Uh, I'm just being honest. Um, realistically, I know he's probably not, but I always wanted to think that him and Biggie just always hope. Fuck always everybody hope. and went off and was like started a whole thing together, whatever, blah blah blah. But I will say this, CJ: this is the greatest half of an album. Um, if you look at Book One versus Book Two, Book Two only me personally and most people who I who I would talk to who listen to Tupac. Um, on book two, there's only two songs that I can really remember without hearing them off the top of my head. And that's wonder why they call you bitch and all eyes on me. Uh, but if you look at the first book, the first book is where this album fucking hits. You got ambitions as a writer. How do you want it? Two of America's most wanted uh, a California love. I ain't mad at you. Those are fucking, when you think of Tupac, those are some of those hits that come out for Tupac. Um, but with that being said, for me, book one heavily outweighs book two. 
So it's hard for me to call it a perfect album because I can listen to book one straight, even though there are some songs in there in book one I don't know off the top of my head. I could listen to book one straight because I know at the beginning, at the middle, and at the end, there's a banger in there. But then I switch over to book two, and you'll, you'll hear Wonder Why They Call You Bitch, which is at the top of the list. Uh, but then I have to wait like six or seven songs before I hear All Eyes on Me. And then after that, I won't hear another song that I, I know off the top of my head for the end of the album. So it's hard for me to call it a perfect – it's a solid album. It's a, it's a perfect – I'd say a perfect half album. But unfortunately, to be a perfect album, in my eyes, both books would have to come with equal fire which is obviously why we threw out greatest hits albums because then it would just be nonstop fucking bangers. But, bangers. <laughs> like, yeah. But un- unfortunately with, with Tupac, I feel you though. I feel you. Um, now how many, how many studio albums did Tupac have? Oh, uh, was it three? Uh, no, he had way more than that. No, I think it was, uh, no, I think he had, I think he had eight and then like two more post-mortem. Yeah. Well, listen, he, he, he listen, for some reason, well, after death, he he keep like doing albums. Like, That's like, why he's still alive? But no, anyways. So that, with that being said, uh, all eyes on me for me is the top of the mountain for Tupac. Tupac is great, and he has other songs that are good on other albums. But he doesn't have another single album that brings as much fire as what All Eyes on Me does. Unfortunately, it's just it's hard to have. Rap is one of the harder things, I think, to have a perfect album because nowadays so many rap albums have interludes, phone calls, stuff like that that aren't considered songs. But they play a part, they, you know, they play a part in the song to come. Yeah, but where did this shit came from? Yeah, but it, it's it's hard to do that and keep a lot of people interested. You see what I'm saying? So it's yeah. it's not a, it's not a bad it, it's not a bad album by any means. Tupac is one of the best rappers to ever do, in my opinion, but it's just not perfect. All right, so I'm uh, I'm next. Uh, I I love Tupac. I love Tupac music. I listen to him, oh, damn it, all his albums. Um, all eyes All eyes on me is the album you go to for publicity of Tupac. Um, and I don't think me personally, and I'm again call me weird, but me personally, I don't think All Eyes on Me was his best album. Me personally. Uh, uh, I really, really loved um, Me Against the World. Uh, th- that album right there is amazing. With all the tracks, especially Dear Mama. I love Dear Mama, The Passion. Um, uh, me Against the World was a, a, a great album. Uh, I thought it was better than All Outs of Me. Um, we're talking about perfect albums, though. And you have, like, to have two books... The perfect album, you need, like Evan said, you need to go from track one to the last track, and literally, it's too many fucking songs to be the perfect album because not all of them so- songs are bangers. Not all, not all of them songs you can listen to straight through. No, no, you can probably, and sometimes I can. But if I give it to some random person, like oh, listen, we're to our trip through both books, they're going, they're going to die off. Plus, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't think I don't even think this is the best two book album, like two CD album. Because if anybody uh, um, remember Speaker Box Love Below, Speaker Box Love Below, right. of uh, amazing goddamn two book album. I thought personally, Speaker Box Love Below was better. Uh, was better. It's a good album. Um, but the, but that's what I'm saying though. To be to be a perfect album, you need to. Like, like literally go through track one to track where well in this case track 100 uh joe, joe your, your next album my album is an actual album that came out when albums were albums on album vinyl and they were vinyl they were album so if you wanted to get crazy you could play oh, yeah. type two first yeah um this is the best album when you're high and when you're not Damn, I was going to say that. There are so few. I was so going to jump on that. <laughs> there are so few albums that work for both, and it was an actual album, and it had a black cover and a prism, and it's "Dark Side of the Moon" by Pink Floyd. So, if you wanted to get crazy, you could even just put side two on first and play "Money" and really get things going, and then when everybody's passed out from being high, time would come on with all the alarms, and they wake everybody up again. Plus. 
it's actually a story, <laughs> like an old school concept album. There's yeah. themes, there's life and death, there's the price of fame, there's what is it to have everything you want and be unfulfilled and all of those things. Plus, did I mention it's a really great album if you're high? <laughs> And it's nine tight songs, and it was on the album charts for over 18 years. 18 years. All Smoke right. weed every day. Okay. So you said nine tracks? It is. The track listing I'm showing right now is 10. Um, they're probably listing the first – the first because the first one has a slash title. Um. Oh, yeah, because it lists breathe. Speak to Me speak as to me and breathe. a minute, 13 seconds, and then it yeah. lists them as two separate tracks. Okay, Most, that's yeah. where the confusion is. Um, yeah. I'll be 100% honest with you. I was not the biggest Pink Floyd fan. Um, I heard The Wall like everyone does, and then I heard Wish You Were Here, and I was like, they're just not doing it for me. I look at The Dark Side of the Moon. Now, I, re I realize that people say Dark Side of the Moon is a fantastic album. Um, I couldn't get into it. Unfortunately, maybe that's because I'm from a different time where we're not worried about, you know, the psychedelic tripping as much as people who, you know, during the 70s, that's what it was all about, you know, getting fucking gone and, and you know, all that shit. Now we don't do that anymore. Hey, no, right. people, people do dumb <laughs> shit nowadays. But regardless, um, I just I, I wasn't into it, unfortunately. And I can't sit like I'm looking at the track list and I was like, I don't know, a single fucking song. Um, so unfortunately for me, it's just, if I was going to pick the better Pink Floyd album, it, it would either be the wall or wish you were here, but that's just my bias of not being the biggest Pink Floyd fan in the world as well. Um, plus it's hard for me to, you know, get into Pink Floyd when I was such a big fan of Queen. Mm. So, but th they're two different, it's same time frame, two different bands, uh, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Uh, I'm gonna go, um. This wasn't a bad album. It really wasn't. Uh, Joe, you did the whole Eminem thing. We talked about yourself, so nobody could talk about you. Talk, talk, <laughs> talk about it. Because uh, literally, you have to be extremely high. Not extremely not extreme high, but you have to be some type of high uh, listen to this album. Um, uh, I listened to this album uh, when everybody told me what, what their picks were. I was like, all right, it's not bad. Uh, without being high, I do like um, uh, Us and Them. That's track Us and Them. Uh, I love that track actually. Um, I was on my belt. Uh, however, I, I, I'm not going to incriminate myself, but I may or, and may or may not be intoxicated and, and listen to this again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's fucking fantastic. Uh, however, I don't want to get intoxicated uh, to listen to 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 vibe out to a song. I need an album to like mellow me out or give me something like some passions. I need, um, I, I don't want to be high to just to feel something. Uh, so, so yeah, so that, that's my only, it's like I said, it's not a bad album. Um, uh, actually, uh, beside my album, it's probably the, the album I would have picked if anything. Um, but yeah, it's just not, I, 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 I don't want to be seeing uh, flying pigs with, with unicorns to, to, to enjoy this, to enjoy this, uh, to enjoy this album. All right, all right, TJ's on you. All right, honestly, I think you need to either need to be a moody teenager or on drugs to fucking you know to actually sit and listen to this whole motherfucking thing. Shit, nowadays they're the same thing. Yeah, for, for real. Yeah, no, you got to be angsty as shit to fucking listen to this all the way through. No, yeah, no. It is. If you catch if you catch someone sober, try listen to this whole album. You should probably give some help. I need to press the shit. Uh, yeah, that, no, that no, that's the vibe I get. This and it, like, you know, I, know, I imagine, I imagine that listening to this shit on repeat over and over again is what created emo kids in the first place. You know, I'm just saying, it's no, it's, it's weird and depressing if you're not high. This this album literally reminds me if you ever watched that '70s show. Literally, yes. every time they went to the circle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every time they went to the circle, the uh, that's what really remind me. All right, so uh, I'm golden and I'm last. Uh, and again, uh, surprise! I've honorable mentions. Um, 
there are there are a lot of perfect albums that I love and I can listen to from front to back. Uh, and I want to say one is the Year of the Gentleman by Neo. Uh, it's it's amazing. Year of the Gentleman by Neo is a fucking fantastic song. It has my third favorite song of all time on it. It's Stop This World. It's the last song on the album. It's, a, it's an amazing album. Uh, Evan, you said there's not really a lot of perfect uh, rap rap albums. People, people may hate me for saying this, but "Get Rich or Die Trying" uh, by Fifty Cent. When I was younger, from that coin to the last that's album, that's the first one, right? The first one, the very very first one. All uh, right, yeah, the first one was a good one. Yeah, the first one was a good one. Joe's gonna like this one. Confessions, Confessions was a a, a, a perfect album. Usher, yeah, by Usher. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my pick, my pick before I uh, change my pick. Uh, damn. By, by, and you and I can go back and forth on the whole damn versus the pimp of butterfly. Yeah, better. Oh, no, 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 no. However, you got to be out of your damn mind. Damn. <laughs> if you don't pick, if this is not the, uh, per- the perfect, all perfect albums, and that's Thriller by Michael Jackson. Thriller by Michael Jackson is the most perfect album from track one to the last track, even the last track, because the last track is the most, um, not the most um, knowledgeable track. But you talking still, about the lady in my life? Lady in my yeah. life. Yeah. It's still, it's still a fantastic, uh, a fantastic uh, song. Uh, it has Thriller, "Want to Be Started Something." Want to be the girl, started something. The girl is mine, but with Paul McCartney, Thriller, "Beat It," Billy Jean, "Human Nature," and Pyt. The, the the only two songs people don't that, that people might not know is "Baby Me Mine" and "Lady My Life," and those two songs are still uh, amazing fucking songs. Interesting thing, I believe almost all those songs are on his greatest hits album. As well. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 this is probably a great, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, greatest hits album is just Thriller <laughs> and like three other songs. Yeah, this is probably a greatest hits album. Uh, that's not called a greatest hits album. This is <laughs> amazing. The, the, listen. Don't matter what you think about his personal life or what you think he did, this song, this album, is fucking amazing. Just, just worry about the album. No, I don't care what way he may or may have done. This album is amazing. You can't find a bad song on this album, and every song on this album besides two is very popular. If if I go down the street right now and ask somebody to sing. Beat it or or thriller or the girl of mine or or whatever, they probably know most of the lyrics or most of all the lyrics, even the little kids. Like th- this is a timeless album. All right. With that being said, CJ, you first. All right. I'll go like this. Uh, I think this is Michael Jackson's best. Not only is it Michael Jackson's best album that he put out. No, I think this is literally one of the greatest albums of all time. And honestly, I can't fuck with it. <laughs> Dude, I, I, know, I love you so Michael Jackson. I used to, I used to bump on Thriller and Dangerous. Yeah, Dangerous is under Yeah, I, I can't. So, so, yeah, so, I, I, so, so history. I can't fuck with this one. Like, His history. History, yeah. History. Uh, yeah. All right, uh, Joe, it's on you. I mean, same thing. 66 million copies or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I yeah. and it is still fantastic. Like pop music is usually disposable and of a time, but it it still hits all the right notes. And the fact that they went back and um, remixed those songs for like a week each, apparently, because they didn't like the original with him and Quincy Jones. Um, it's yeah, it's just amazing. So I, I I'm gonna give it the uh, damn. I wish I'd gotten there first. So, so here's the thing. So I, I talked to uh, David Foster, who runs the Matt Poker League in in Portland, Oregon. So we uh, so, so we, we were talking about uh, about about this, and I said, damn. But then he said, I'm surprised you picked Michael Jackson. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with me? I didn't pick Thriller. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, like what? Uh, listen. So as soon as so he said that, I I I wrote y'all like, listen, I'm changing my answer. <laughs> I changed my answer to Thriller because yeah. there's, there's nothing like I can do about that. Thriller is fucking amazing. Yeah. No, yeah. As soon as I saw that, I was mad as shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, why the fuck did I not pick that? <laughs> uh, 
that's just the most amazing album. Uh, ever on you. All right. The the one knock I have against Thriller is it has two songs that I can't stand, and it's the only two songs you said people might not know: uh, "Lady of My Life" and um, "Baby Be Mine." The other knock that I have, because I actually have two knocks, whatever. Fuck, knock, knock. You can't have one without the other. Uh, is it does not have my favorite Michael Jackson song on it, and I get that my favorite Michael Jackson song came a little bit later, so it's it's a different it's a different point in his career. Um, it, it's a solid album. It's his best album, um, but I just think it's missing a couple things. You know, what song? Uh, my my personal favorite uh, Michael Jackson song is they don't really care. No, they don't really care about us. Uh. Actually, actually, so fucking we, great song. We we will be doing the best Michael Jackson song one 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 of these days. The thing about Michael Jackson is his music stands the test of time. Mm-hmm. Um, personal issues aside, he was the king of pop, and it seems like every generation comes a time where they argue who is this generation's Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. A lot of the times, some people like for, for, for people my age nowadays, and I might speak for not everybody, obviously, but Chris Brown was up there in terms of his ability to sing and dance. Justin Timberlake for his ability to sing songs and do stuff was up there. So when people are constantly getting compared to Michael Jackson, it's hard to knock anything Michael Jackson does professionally. Now we all know Michael Jackson had a crazy side life. Um, but in terms of a perfect album, this is as close as you can get. It's two songs off, personally, because there's nothing in my power that would stop me from skipping those two songs to get to the next song or just turn the album off or restart it. Um, because you have to look at it. It starts hard. Want to be started something. And then all of a sudden it leads into Baby Be Mine, and you're like, fuck it, I could be listening to The Girl Is Mine right now. Skip. <laughs> And then all of a sudden you run through the second track, the second side, you got, you start off with arguably one of his best songs ever and beat it. Then you got Billie Jean. Human Nature is, for me, it's hit or miss, but it's more hit than miss. And then PYT. Wait, what? Who would say uh, Human Nature is miss? Human Nature is a fucking great song. <laughs> don't, don't disrespect Human Nature like that. Don't, uh, don't disrespect Human Nature like that. Anyways, and you go from Human Nature to PYT, and I think PYT would have been the perfect song to end on. If you were to replace The Lady in My Life and Baby Be Mine with with uh, Remember the Time, Smooth Criminal, uh, Black or White, any of those songs would have made it a complete perfect album for me. But those two songs just throw it off for me. All right. With that being said, that's the end of our show. Um, so say goodbye, friends. Uh, once again, my name is Evan Hamataki. I'm no closer to uh, good weight than I am bad weight. <laughs> this is your boy CJ, a.k.a. Beautiful Brown Ass. I just want brown sugar, that's all. <laughs>